Good morning. Welcome to Olive Branch this morning. Uh, did everybody survive the uh, white death apocalypse that we did or did not get through last week? Um, but uh, Ginger was listening because I'm, uh, Ginger was watching online because I said something about we were going to move the church to Fort Lauderdale and she sent me a text and said, when are we going to Fort Lauderdale and where are you having services? I'm like, so everybody may need to sell their houses. We may be going to Fort Lauderdale. Um, we are going to get back in the swing of things this week. We, we think the winter weather at least is going to be holding off this week, which means uh, we'll be having our Bible study on Tuesday night with Tom uh, in the book of Matthew. And then on Wednesday night at 630, our women's Bible study is going to continue. Ladies, if you've not been a part of that, uh, you've just missed one. It's uh, six women of the Bible. Uh, Melissa is leading that. And uh, so that'll be Wednesday at 630. We invite you to come. Um, if, if, you have, uh, if you need to bring your kids, uh, when we, uh, uh, I was here and we shot some baskets and, and uh, I, I'm not the world's greatest uh, 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 watcher of children, but uh, I can take care of it. Um, I believe I handed out a lot of soda, which became, pro- <laughs> which became Amanda's problem afterwards, but I'm in grandfather mode. It really didn't make any difference to me. So if you need to bring your kids, uh, if you want to bring your kids and, we'll ha- uh, and they've got homework to do, we can, we can uh, get through homework. We play some games. So uh, don't, let, uh, don't let needing uh, to watch your kids be a hindrance to coming to the Bible study Wednesday night. Um, the Long Run Association has uh, made a few adjustments. Normally we have uh, um, Lenten services each Sunday evening. Uh, leading up to uh, Palm Sunday, uh, which the first one would have been tonight. Um, But we're not doing that because of COVID. What we've decided to do is have a series of three, uh, actually three services. There will be an association. Our main service will be on Palm Sunday, March the 28th. And that'll be at six o'clock in the evening. And that will be here. Uh, so we have plenty of room and people can still distance. So we invite you to put that on the, on the, uh, on your calendar on the 28th. And then there, uh, center square has a Monday, thir- Thursday service, uh, each, uh, uh, on the Thursday of Easter week each year, they're going to again, have that and invite the association to be a part of that. And then Mount Sterling has, uh, traditionally had a good Friday service, um, the Friday before Easter, Um, they're going to host that again and have invited the association to come and, but they're going to move it because of space. They're going to move that service down to Switzerland Baptist. So the good Friday service will be at Switzerland Baptist, but Mount Sterling will be hosting it. So, um, so we're, we're trying to, uh, uh, keep everybody as safe as we can and still uh, celebrate, uh, the Easter services. Um, today is Larry's birthday. Larry's here somewhere. Where are you, Larry? Tolbert, there, uh, he's over there. Uh, there he is. <laughs> Today is Larry's birthday. Congratulations, Larry. And uh, so uh, we want to wish him a happy birthday. If you delivered meals last week, we appreciate everybody's help. That was an amazing day. Um, but if you delivered meals, um, if you could take a piece of paper and write down the names of the people you delivered to, um, even if they weren't on your initial list, because I know some people went to houses and there wasn't anybody there, so they took them other places, which is a good thing. Um, so if you did that, if you would write those names down on a piece of paper and give them to either me or Amanda, um, we can track that. Uh, for all the people we got meals to, there were other people that we didn't get meals to. So uh, if we do that again, we want to make sure uh, we're kind of on track. Um, let's see. Anybody know how to make donuts? If you know, if you know how to make donuts, get with me later. Um, and that's a scary thought when people go, Pat's wanting to make donuts for some reason. Um, the Good News Club, um, Good News Club's uh, Child Evangelic, Evangelical Fellowship um, that operates Good News Clubs all over the area. They're having a, a meeting. They're trying to figure out how they're going to fit into the, the new normal of schools and things like that. So they're having an informational meeting um, next Thursday, February the 25th, and that'll be at six o'clock and that will be here. So Richard, I need you to turn the heat on. So, um, 
So if, if you are interested in learning more about Good News Clubs or providing some, some advice or getting some information, that will be here next Thursday, the 25th at 6 p.m. Um, our offering plates, again, continue to be in the back. Uh, we're not passing things back and forth. Um, so if you are interested in uh, helping with uh, financially with the church, we invite you to do that. Uh, we also have an online giving platform. Um, which a lot of people take advantage of. So if you're interested in learning more about that, you can see me uh, after service, and uh, it's a real easy thing to get set up. Uh, Big Stuff 2021 is June the 21st through the 25th. Uh, we will leave on Sunday, June the 20th. I think the 20th, I think the 21st is Monday. Um, we will actually leave on Sunday the 20th, which is Father's Day. So you can put that in your in your calendars and uh, uh, middle school, high school students and also adults if you, uh, if you are willing to go as a chaperone we would love to have you um, so we're excited about that so uh, if you need more information there are, there are forms out on the front table between the doors uh, or you can see me and we'll, and we'll get you one of those forms um, so those are our announcements this week uh, our prayer list uh, we continue to remember uh, Jill Cooley uh, as she goes through her treatments for pancreatic cancer. Um, uh, Earl, uh, I saw Babe and Denny last night at the ball game. I didn't get a chance to talk to him, but um, we need to continue to remember Earl. I think he's doing better, but um, uh, during this cold weather, he, he's had breathing issues in the past, uh, so we just want to continue to remember him. Uh, Logan Day, uh, a little fella, he... Uh, had some issues, and um, so uh, 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 Amanda Day's uh, nephew, right, nephew, um, he's, did I see he was home? Did I see a video of him in a wheelchair at your brother's house? Okay, so, and how old's Logan? Just turned eight, so we want to remember him. Um, Paul and Lisa Park down in Texas. Um, you may be following what was going on down in Texas. Uh, uh, I had a couple of uh, conversations with Paul uh, uh, over Messenger this week. I, I think they're doing well. They're getting ready to move, actually, uh, to the beach. So uh, if you like South Padre Island, I can get you a pretty good deal on a, a free place to stay. Right, Paul? Free place to stay. Um, cause, so, uh, but... Uh, they're dealing with that. And also um, Elizabeth Hall, who's Lisa's mom, uh, she lives in Charleston, South Carolina. She's having a heart catheterization uh, this week. So uh, Paul asked that we put uh, Elizabeth on our list. Um, there's a little boy in uh, the daycare that Mariah's kids go to. Um, his name was Oliver, like six months old. Um, they took him in to do some follow-up surgery, and in the middle of that surgery, they had some kind of an issue, and uh, he ended up passing away, a uh, little boy, a little tiny, and uh, he had some siblings that go, that go to the daycare, and uh, so that's been quite dramatic for that whole situation, so we want to lift that up. Uh, continue to remember the Mike Poling family, the Denton Bush family, and the Lloyd Labe families. Um, Clay McClellan, uh, Becky and Roger Brooks's grandson, with uh, appendix issues. Uh, Linda Griffin, I uh, want to remember Linda. Um, uh, Connie Altoff, I haven't heard anymore from Connie's eyes. So I so, uh, want to remember her. Um, Gwen Ballard, uh, Randy and Larice C's granddaughter, uh, has some, uh, was born I think with her hip out of socket and they're doing some things. She's in some kind of a brace. Um, so I want to remember her. Uh, Ken Byers, many of you know may, may know Ken and Sylvia. Um, Ken is is slowly but surely getting better, and uh, we uh, praise God for that. Um, Jim and Beth Kincaid, our volunteer Christian builders friends down in Texas. Uh, Jim had surgery this week. I heard from Beth that um, uh, everything went well, and that he was probably going to be in the hospital two or three more days, and then get to come home. Um, we were worried about that with again with all the stuff going on in Texas when you got surgeries scheduled you don't know if that's going to happen or not uh, Paul Hankinson got any more info on Paul 
Okay. So good days and bad days. So we want to remember, continue to remember him. Uh, all of our frontline healthcare workers, um, as uh, as they continue to deal with uh, the pandemic, and also uh, we we never want to forget those unspoken requests that all of us have, um, and uh, just the things that that are heavy in our hearts and uh, our minds. And even though we may not say them here, uh, we're always aware that uh, God is listening. So, would you join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, again, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity to gather here. And fathers, we lift up this list of names. Uh, for some, they're they're just names. For others, they're they're family members, they're friends, they're they're close, intimate people in our lives. And and uh, young and old, um, Father, uh, we just sometimes we just don't understand why these things happen or why these things are going on in our lives. And and Father, I just ask that not only would your hand of healing touch all of these folks who are on our list, but also, Father, if you would simply reach into our hearts and our minds and reassure us that of a truth that we should always know, that you already know about these, you already know the outcome of them, and all things are going to work to your glory. Father, help us to rest in that faith today. Father, be with us now as we go through the remainder of our service. And we ask these things in your son's name and for his sake. Amen. If everybody will please stand, we're going to start out within the suite by and by. Let's turn these monitors on, Tristan. We <laughs> just sing like this. <laughs> We, we cheat up here. <laughs> we have TV monitors that are wonderful when you can't remember every lyric to every song. <laughs> what happened to these? Good question. <laughs> 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 okay. In case you missed it, we're going to start out within the sweet by and by this morning. <laughs> Take it away, oh, Joshua. <laughs> I think we're ready. <laughs> Sweet by and by, 
We shall meet on the beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore All right, we're going to sing my essay. He 
is on my side. We are the sons, we are the daughters of God.
Would you please pray for us? I do not staple my message together so I can move things, but I make a copy for Tristan. So I staple his and I paperclip mine. And out of habit, I stick the paperclip on the side of my pocket over here. And there are times when, like, then I take it off and just shove it in, like, literally there. Chiquita goes to do the laundry and there's like 27 paperclips in there or something. But, uh... Boy Scouts in the room? Any Boy Scouts in the room? Past, present Boy Scouts? Anybody was a Boy Scout? I was the most decorated Cub Scout in Centerville Pac-16 history. Um, was the first one to flunk out of Boy Scouts because I couldn't tie a knot. <laughs> Left-handed and knot tying did not work for me. But um, what is the Boy Scout motto, right? Be prepared. Be prepared. It's a good motto to have. We should all be prepared, and we're going to talk about that uh, this morning, how not only how we get prepared, but that we should be prepared. Um, many of you may know that today is the first Sunday of Lent. Um, last Wednesday, this past Wednesday, was Ash Wednesday, and uh, you may know that. I, this was something that kind of came to me late in life, but... Um, Mardi Gras happens in the days before Ash Wednesday. Um, the, uh, 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 the last, the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday, they call Fat Tuesday, and that is the culmination of Mardi Gras. So I always wondered when Mardi Gras happened because it moved different times. What well, happens because all these people get together and they have these huge parties and these bashes and all of that, and they get up to Fat Tuesday and they really have a bash, and then Ash Wednesday comes and they they uh, stop doing all that stuff for 40 days. So um, uh, I don't know that they had Mardi Gras this year. Maybe they did. But uh, in essence, those folks get all their partying, celebrating out of their system before uh, Lent begins on Ash Wednesday. Um, Lent traditionally is known as a 40-day period that is a time of reflection and preparation before the celebration of Easter, which this year will be on Sunday, April the 4th. Um, uh, you're going to count and you're going to say that's more than 40 days, but uh, early calendars did not include uh, Sabbath days as part of, of counting those days. Um, so uh, you may see some that say Lenten, Lenten season is 50 days, some say 46. Most will tell you 40. Um, but the, observant of Lent, the observation of Lent is on the Christian calendar, but it isn't in the Bible. So... Um, it's important for us to know that. Trad traditionally, Lent is, was celebrated by members of the Catholic faith um, and also the Anglican and the Lutheran faith. But um, over time, Protestant uh, denominations uh, began to celebrate Lent. And here, our Long Run Association, as you heard me say earlier, uh, we have traditionally held Lenten services on the Sunday evenings between Ash Wednesday and Palm Sunday. This year, there should have been six but uh, uh, due to COVID, our association, like I said earlier, is now going to have a Palm Sunday service here on March the 28th, and then Center Square's Monday, Monday Thursday service and Mount Sterling's Good Friday service um, on Thursday and Friday before Easter. So now that you're all caught up to date, you may have a question. What exactly is Lent? And that's a good question, because it's a, it's a term we hear, but we don't really embrace that like I said it's on the Christian calendar but it's not in the Bible so you can't go to the Bible and go okay when did Jesus celebrate Lent or when did uh, Moses and the Israelites when did they celebrate Lent they they didn't um, the word Lent is a shortened form of an old English word called Lincoln which means spring season 
Um, and there's also the Dutch word for that same thing is Linton, L-E-N-T-I-N. And that translates from Latin, which means 40. So um, what they did was they had this 40-day se season before spring came. And Linton or Linton were, was that celebration. And it became, uh, it, it, it was adopted by Christian people. It was adopted by people of faith as a 40-day period that traditionally signifies the 40 days that, that Jesus was in the desert and was tempted by Satan prior to the beginning of his earthly ministry. You may remember that after, after Jesus was baptized, he was led out into the desert and, and spent 40 days there where he was uh, tempted by Satan uh, before, he was, uh, before he started his ministry. So the early, uh, early denominations of faith took that 40 days and they took this um, spring season 40 day celebration as winter is over and spring is coming and they mesh them together and they begin to celebrate Lenten which ended up being Lent which is Lenten service so now you know more about Lent than you ever hoped to right but Lent is a time of reflection it's, it's a time of being quiet and listening to God not, not a time necessarily of shame, but more of an awareness of how our sin separates us from God and what cost God took to reunite us with him. It's a time of prayer, a, a, a time of prayer and study that, that should draw us closer to God. It's a time of sacrifice, a, a time uh, that helps us translate the sacrifice God made for us into a consideration of what our sacrifices are, which is why traditionally you may hear people giving up things for Lent, right? Um, they, they will, uh, for these 40 days, I'm going to give up something. Um, or they may fast during a time uh, of the Lenten season. And, and we'll talk about that in the coming weeks. But, but that's where that idea of giving something up for Lent comes from it's also a time of charity it, it's a time of uh, that we all understand our blessings and it also is a time when we should be aware of those around us who don't have and don't share the same blessings that we do so it's a time of reflection and repentance it's a time of prayer it's a time of sacrifice and it's a time of charity so this morning we're going to begin with what it means to have a time of preparation. Like I said, it's, the 40-day period of Lent is, is a time of preparation to prepare ourselves for Easter Sunday. So, so what does it mean to have a time of preparation? What, what exactly are we preparing for? And how do we know when we're prepared? How do we know when we're ready for what comes next. See, a lot of times in, in, in general traditions, but in particular, I think sometimes in, in spiritual traditions, we get so caught up in celebrating the tradition, we never stop to think about, well, why are we really doing that? Well, we do it because we've always done it. Well, but why have we always done it? Well, we're really not sure, but we always did it, so we're going to keep doing it. So as we get ready for Easter Sunday, as we get ready 40 days into the future, what are we preparing for and how do we know when we are prepared? Our focal scripture this morning comes from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. In your Bibles, it's called uh, Philippians. Um, and Paul is going to speak to the church in chapter 3 with just two verses. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn over to Philippians chapter 3. If not, uh, the scripture will be up on the screens. And I'm going to read, beginning in chapter 10, Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. Paul says these words, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participate in his sufferings becoming like him in death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. I want to know 
Christ. So ends the reading of God's word. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, again, we just thank you for this day. I, I thank you for the opportunity to gather here and to share your word. Father, as, as we begin this process of heading towards Easter, I, I ask not only today, but in the coming Sundays that you would open our minds and open our hearts. That, Father, we would draw closer to you than we ever have before. Father, we love you. We're, we're honored by your presence with us today. And we ask these things in the name of your Son. Amen. So if Lent is based on Jesus going out into the wilderness, like I said, it, it, it commemorates those 40 days that he was out in the wilderness immediately following his baptism. And, and we find that account in, in Matthew chapter 4. It's also in Mark chapter 1 and in Luke chapter 4. So um, the... The situation of Jesus going out into the wilderness is in three of the four Gospels. So if it's all based on him in the wilderness for 40 days, then we begin to see the significance of what's going on here. In, in preparation for the beginning of his earthly ministry, before he walked in front of crowds, be, before he chose his disciples... Jesus went into the wilderness. He was led into the wilderness. Not as a time of punishment, but as a time of preparation. We're told that Jesus was led there by the Spirit. And that he fasted for 40 days and was hungry the human side of Jesus. So he was there for 40 days before Satan ever shows up. You know, we think he walks into the, the wilderness or he walks into the desert and, and Satan says, I've been waiting on you. I got 40 days worth of fun stuff planned for us to do. But that's not what happened. He, he goes into the desert, he goes into the wilderness and for 40 days he fasts. He, he doesn't eat anything and he gets hungry and he gets weak. And at his human frailty, at his human weakness, at his human low point, Satan shows up. And those 40 days, they, they also remind me of that God made it rain on Noah and the ark for 40 days and 40 nights, right? The Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 years before they finally got into the promised land. And Jesus, after his resurrection, spends 40 more days on earth before ascending to heaven. And in all of those cases, it was a time of preparation, a time to prepare for what was about to come next. As the rain beats down on the ark, Noah and his family, safe inside, had the time not only to draw closer to God, but also to think about what, God, what plans God had for them after the rain stopped and the waters subsided. The wandering of the Israelites is, is seen as punishment for their lack of faith in God, but it was also a time of preparation for them so that they would rely on their faith once they entered the promised land. And in those days following the resurrection, Jesus continued to teach and to love those around him, preparing them for what was to come after he ascended back to heaven. So as we look at these next 40 days, many people when they look from the, outs or when they look from the outside in are tempted to focus on what's being given up rather than what's being gained. Who's here has ever been on a trip, a vacation, even, even maybe a weekend away? Well, before you left, what did you, what did you do? And why did you do it? You made preparations, right? You prepared for your time away. You, you did laundry and you packed your clothes. You made arrangements with someone to watch your pets. 
You may have stopped your mail or you may have cleaned out your refrigerator. You prepared to be away, right? Or, and this has been happening a lot here in our church recently, who's had a baby, right? Babies usually come after about nine months, right? But what did you do during that time? Did you prepare for the arrival of the baby? Right? Ian and Courtney didn't bring the new baby home from the hospital and say, hey, you know, we really ought to buy a crib and some diapers and maybe some baby clothes, right? No. You spend that time with expectation and you spend that time in preparation. And it's the same thing with God. Jesus, in getting ready to begin his ministry, knew that he needed to prepare himself for it. He didn't just say after his baptism, well, that's over and I'm wet, so let's go talk to some people. Right? So what does that mean for us? What's that mean for you? You can look and say, well, Pat, you know, those are a lot of stories and a lot of things in the Bible. And, and those people, you know, we look back and God was about to do great things for them. And, and God was preparing them. And I see all that, but, but I really don't know how that fits into me. Right? What's that mean in 2021 for me? Well, I believe that for us as Christians, as, as part of God's family, our ministry truly begins at Easter. If Jesus was never raised from the dead, then our witness and our ministry to others really has no meaning. We can talk all we want about our love for Christ and for each other, but if Jesus is crucified and buried and there is no resurrection three days later, then there is no good news. Am I saying the other parts of Scripture aren't important? No. But your faith and your ministry hinges on what happened on Easter morning. In the same way that Jesus overcame death and returned to life, that's exactly what we're talking to people about, and that's exactly what we believe That's the good news. So, if, if Jesus took 40 days in the wilderness in preparation for the beginning of his ministry, it seems only fitting that we, individually and collectively as a church family, should set some time aside to prepare ourselves for the beginning of our ministry. And the continuation of of our ministry. So how do we do that? Well, I believe it takes us back to our scripture passage from Paul today to the church in Philippi. Paul says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participate in his sufferings, becoming like him in death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. I mean, that's a powerful sentence. Paul says, I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of his resurrection. I want to know him. And our question today is, do you truly know Christ? Do you know Him? See, a lot of people know about Christ. But Paul doesn't say he wants to know about Him. He says he wants to know Him. I know about Carl. But Sandy knows Him, right? Right? I know about Megan Marie, but Adam knows her. 
I know a little bit about medicine, but Dr. Mefford knows medicine, right? Had an earache a couple of days ago, and all I could think about was when I had an earache when I was a kid, you know what my mom did? She, she lit a cigarette and blew cigarette smoke in my ear. Does anybody, has anybody else ever had that, right? I'm thinking, you know, she got lung cancer, but I don't have earache anymore. I know about medicine. I don't know medicine. Melissa knows medicine. I know about Carl. Sandy knows him. See, there's a difference when you know about something as opposed to when you know it. Parents, have you ever been in a parent-teacher conference and the teacher goes, your child is just a gift, <laughs> right? And in your mind, you're going, you should see them at home about 8.30, right? What Paul is saying is something that, that we all need to hear and to understand and to strive for. Lots of people know about Jesus. Lots of people can tell you about things he did in his life and some of the people he encountered and some of the miracles he performed. Lots of people know about him, they just don't know him. Paul says, I want to know him. I don't just want a mental knowledge of this man. I want to be intimately acquainted with him to the point that I know him with all my heart as well as with all my brain. I want to know Christ. And family, if, if, if we're going to do the work of Christ here in terms of evangelism and discipleship, we can't just reel off a bunch of words about Jesus. We have to be ready to go deeper and talk about how we know Jesus. Tell me about this Jesus that you worship when you go to church, somebody may ask you. Well, he was the son of God and he saved sinners from an eternity in hell and instead gives them eternity in heaven. And technically that's right. But it's something that anyone could recite out of any book they've ever read. There are people who aren't Christians who can, recite, who can say that sentence. He saves sinners from an eternity in hell and instead gives them an eternity in heaven. Okay? Tell me about this Jesus that you worship when you go to church. He changed my life. I was enjoying life, but when I would lay down at night, I was filled with all of those fears and regrets that just creep into my mind. I always felt like there was a hole inside of me, and I tried all sorts of ways to fill that hole up, but nothing ever worked. But then I found Jesus, and all of that changed. All of those fears I had went away when I simply handed them over to God. That emptiness that I had always felt was filled up. I found a community of people who loved me and supported me in, in spite of my past and, and, and in spite of my sin because they all had a past and they all had sin too. See, the first sentence told you about him. The second statement tells you how I know him, right? Tell me about this guy that you worship when you go to church. He changed my life. Ginger posted a statement on her Facebook page recently. It said, it's not that Christians want to shove Jesus down your throat, but man, if you knew. If you knew how he can transform you, how he can take away all that bitterness, that sorrow, that hurt, that depression, anxiety. We boast about our Lord because he is mighty. I don't want to shove him down your throat, but 
if you just knew what he did for me. If you just knew how I used to search and how I was lonely and how I would lay awake in bed at night and I would be scared and I would wonder what's going to happen next. And suddenly Jesus just walks in and went, give me all of that. If you just stopped knowing about him and you just started knowing him, your life is going to change like my life changed. And you may be in this room today and you may feel that. And we all ought to. If you only knew what I know. If you only knew who I know. Not what I know about him, but what I know of him. And then Paul goes further. I want to know the power of his resurrection and participate in his sufferings, becoming like him in death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not only does he want to know him, he wants, he wants to know the power of his resurrection, he wants to participate in the sufferings that Jesus went through. Remember, he's writing this letter after Jesus has ascended, Paul never actually met Jesus face to face other than a little encounter with a big beam of light on the road to Damascus. He wasn't one of his disciples. He didn't follow him around for three years. But when Jesus got his attention, he got his attention. And Paul went from a high-ranking member of the Sanhedrin, a Pharisee, a person who who not only hunted down Christians, but persecuted them, and in some cases uh, arrested them and, and, and put things in, in place that led to their deaths. And in a moment, he was driven to his knees. Yes, Lord, he said. Paul gave up everything from that moment to follow Christ. His position, his power, his wealth, his family, his status. But he says here something pretty deep. In essence, if I'm going to be, if I'm going to be a true part of God's family, a true co-heir with Jesus, then I have to understand Jesus to the extent of his suffering just as much as I understand the miracles and the love and the caring. To fully know Jesus on his good days, I also have to fully know Jesus on his worst day, the day of his crucifixion. Because to fully know the extent of that suffering is to know the weight that my sin placed on his body. To not only say, but truly believe that I am a follower of Christ without question. Even if it means I'm going to experience the same fate that Jesus did. Because I believe with all my heart that I have the very same future waiting for me that Jesus did. On the other side of earthly death lies spiritual eternity. And that is worth any possible thing that I could go through here on earth. If I'm going to know him on his good day, I need to know him on his worst day. And his worst day is the day that he took my sin and your sin and, and God piled all of that on his son. And my sin weighed him down that day. We all want to talk about, you know, Jesus loving the little kids and, you know, the pictures of Jesus holding the lambs and things like that. But 
if we're going to prepare for Easter, we have to prepare knowing the extent of what he did for us. We need to prepare knowing the extent of what he did for you. And that's what Paul says. I want to know him, but I also want to know his, his resurrection. I want to know, I want to participate in his sufferings because I need to, to become like him in death. And what lies ahead after that is worth any possible thing that I can go through here on earth. Why? Because I have a secret. Pat has a secret. Pat has an unwavering belief. I know what comes next. And its, and its glory is far more than anything that could ever happen to me here. Because this is just temporary. I know what comes next. And family, I encourage each of you individually and all of us collectively to take this time, to take this Lenten season and prepare ourselves for the journey that we are about to embark on. That we will see Easter Sunday as the moment when we commit ourselves fully and firmly to our task to lead people to a saving knowledge of Christ to lead people where you already are. To look at people and go, I know it's tough. I know what you're going through right now. I know your struggles, but guess what? I have a secret that I want to share with you. I know a guy, right? Well, I have this problem. Well, guess what? I know a guy. We need to be ready to lead people where we already are. And we need to lead people to where their eternal salvation lies. We need to lead people to actually know Christ, not just know about him. And in order to do that, we need to prepare ourselves. And that's what comes next. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day. I, I thank you for this time of preparation. I, I thank you that, that in the midst of this pandemic, there is a light there. In the same way that, that we see hope in getting over this virus, I, I hope with the, with the same knowledge and with the same strength and faith, we also see hope that there is something better on the other side of the struggles that we have here. Someday, we're going to spend an eternity with you. We need to prepare ourselves for that. And we also need to prepare ourselves with the knowledge that, that, we, that other people know that they have the opportunity to the opportunity to also spend that eternity with you. Strengthen us, Father. Strengthen our words and strengthen our hearts and strengthen our faith. That we can look at other people when they have struggles and we can say, you know what, I know a guy. I need to tell you what I know about Jesus. Father, there may be somebody in this room today who needs to make that decision for the very first time. Maybe there's somebody who needs to rededicate themselves to you that, that was str strong in their faith. And over time, they just sort of wandered away and, and they look up and they go, I'm not as close to you as I used to be, and, but that's okay. We need to rededicate ourselves to that relationship maybe there's somebody who needs to join in the fellowship of this church or, or maybe there's somebody who just needs to pray about their eternity and your place in it 
whatever it is today, Father, I just ask that that you would place boldness in, a boldness in our hearts, that we would answer your call this morning. Father, we love you. We are honored by your presence. And we ask these things in the name of your Son and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to ask members of our prayer team to stand and move around the room. And if uh, you need to pray about something today, they, uh, they want to pray with you and pray for you. If you don't feel like you want to come up here in front of everybody. But uh, don't leave here today with worries on your heart. Don't leave here today without an assurance in your heart. We all, we love you. But Christ loves you too. Let's stand and sing together. Do that again just to make sure. No. Uh, um, this is Alicia Brogan Fritter. Um, and uh, she comes today and asks to move her membership from Florence Church of Christ here to Olive Branch. And if you agree with that, that decision, would you say amen? Amen. 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 I'm going to ask Pam to come up. And we have another verse, right? We can Maybe. Have another. We have another verse. We can have another <laughs> verse. We, we have another verse, right? <laughs> Okay, we're going to sing one more verse. And if the Lord is speaking to your heart, won't you please come today? Do the last verse again. Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because.
but I want you to come up and, and welcome Alicia to the Olive Branch family. And uh, just uh, remember all the things going on this week and, and just remember to prepare yourselves uh, in the coming days and weeks for the Easter season. Uh, I'm going to ask David Todd if he would close in a word of prayer and then we're going to sing our hymn of invitation and then you are dismissed. Let's sing our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.